Think of this, a country which has $24 trillion, yes, $24 trillion in natural resources, but it's ranked 187 on Human Development Index. A country which has 40% of world's cotton deposits. As you already know that cotton is used in making electronic products including smartphones, laptops, and electric car batteries, but has 71% of its population living below the poverty line. This is the sad reality of the Democratic Republic of Congo. Once the second industrialized nation in Africa, now reduced to one of its poorest nations. On today's African History 101, we look into how much has the DRC lost due to the civil war and who is fueling this civil war. The DRC is one of the most resource-rich nations on earth, boasting of minerals including diamonds, gold, lithium, rare earth metals, natural gas, oil deposits, and if that was not enough, the Congo River has the potential of producing enough hydroelectricity to power the entire African continent. In economics, there is a debate if having mineral resources is a blessing or a curse. While it is true that countries like Saudi Arabia, Qatar, and United Arab Emirates have seen their fortune change for the better after they discovered oil, that's not the case with the Democratic Republic of Congo. To understand the current problems in DRC, it is important to understand its complicated history. The Congolese have suffered from their richness of their resources for close to 150 years. During the late 19th century through to 1963, when independence was gained, the Congolese were brutalized by the Belgians, who were the colonial masters led by King Leopold II. The Belgians used the native population as slaves to grow labor and mine the rich mineral that littered the country, especially in the east and south. At the time of its independence in 1960, the DRC was the second most industrialized country in Africa after South Africa. It boasted a thriving mining sector and its agriculture sector was relatively productive. But the country was plagued with political instability, which led to the assassination of the DRC's first Prime Minister, Patrice Lumumba. And a coup was later followed, led by Joseph Dizere Mabutu. The Mabutu dictatorship would last for three decades. Mabutu's regime was characterized by patronage, corruption, and economic mismanagement, so acute that it weakened the DRC's institutions and economy to the point of collapse. During this time, Mobutu Sesiseko became one of the wealthiest people in the world with a net worth of $5 billion. Mobutu was ousted in 1996 by a Rwandan orchestrated coup and replaced by warlord Lolent Kabila. If you want to know more about Lolent Kabila and the Congo Civil War, click the link below on the story of Lolent Kabila and how his reign was catalyst of the Civil War. Kabila soon proved hostile to his allies, fostering former Hutu militia from Rwandan genocide of 1994 in the forests of eastern Congo. In August 1998, Rwanda simultaneously invaded with her own army whilst funding a newly formed pro-Rwandan rebel movement, the RCD. Uganda followed suit, allied with a northern rebel movement named the MLC composed of disfranchised Congolese businessmen. The DRC's government plea for help was answered by Zimbabwe and Angola. Thrown into the mix were the Mai Mai, a nationalist, inter-ethnic, cruel, armed militia determined to expel any foreign force. Eighteen months and millions of civilian deaths later, a stalemate was reached. The DRC roughly divided between the West, controlled by the government, and the East, controlled by the labels. Staffed of cash and all actors began to seek means of funding their military campaigns that would provide a quick return for minimum effort. A series of economic agendas emerged that coveted motives from military funding into a private gains. Each actor in the conflict raised funds using different means and patterns of leadership. Rwanda, in control of the cotton-rich Kivu region, integrated a commercial wing into her army, 
known as the Congo Desk. It netted the government 340 million US dollars between 1998 and 2000. The RCD, complicit in Rwanda's activities, extorted from the local populace through control of a number of trading routes which it taxed heavily. Uganda's operation further north came under discretionary control of high ranking and logistics for a number of mining areas, exporting minerals through Uganda and controlling strategic border towns where any trade was taxed. Kabila's administration benefited from international recognition that allowed it to fundraise by distributing mining concessions in the area still under its control. In return for their military support, Zimbabwe and Angola were given rights to exploit resource-rich regions. Zimbabwe set up multiple operations in the Diamond and Copper-rich Katanga province. Angola's economic and military agenda was limited. Most disorganized in their methods were the Mai Mai militia. Internally fractured, militarily and sophisticated, the Mai Mai operated by routing the population, fighting for control of taxable trading routes. After the assassination of Laurent Kabila, his son Joseph Kabila succeeded him. The young Kabila would sign a peace agreement with the rebels to end the civil war in 2004, but peace did not last. In 2009, the war started again. The civil war has been devastating to the DRC, with 3.5 million deaths that have occurred as a result of the civil war, with 4.5 million people internally displaced. The civil war in DRC is considered to be the deadliest war after World War. The country has also seen its mighty economy deteriorate at a fast pace. 38% of world's armed conflict have been fought in Africa. In 2006, almost half of all high-intensity conflicts were in Africa. This has had a devastating impact on the economy of those countries affected. According to an Oxfam report on the cost of armed conflict in Africa, it is estimated that for the 23 countries that were involved in armed conflict between 1990 to 2005, the countries lost around $284 billion dollars representing an average annual loss of 15% of GDP. This amount to an average of 18 billion US dollars per year lost by Africa due to armed conflict. The Democratic Republic of Congo has lost around 18 billion US dollars or 29% of its GDP between 1996 to 2003, where a ceasefire agreement was signed according to the report. In addition to that, the DRC has incurred indirect costs from lost opportunities that are even higher. During this time, the economic activities grinded to a halt. Income from variable natural resources were ending up in gorilla fighters rather than benefiting the country. The country suffered from high inflation, increase in external debt, and reduced investment. While people suffered from unemployment, lack of public service, and trauma. The mineral wealth found in DRC has been one of the catalysts of continued fighting. It is a known fact that armed rebels sell these precious minerals on the black market and use the proceeds to fund their war efforts. It is estimated that DRC loses around $1 billion through rebel groups selling minerals on the black market. Congo's artisanal gold production is estimated to be around $437 million a year, but all of it is illegal and therefore smuggled out of the country through Tanzania, Burundi, or Uganda. According to a UN report, most of Congo's gold end up in Dubai, where buyers don't ask too many questions about its origins. These kind of stories are common to every mineral in DRC including cotton. If you think that only labels are to blame for the loss of mineral wealth in DRC, you are wrong. Al Jazeera reported that at least 750 million US dollars paid by companies to Congo's tax agencies and state-owned mining company disappeared between 
2013 and 2015. During the research of this video, I was intrigued to find out who is fueling this conflict. My starting point was to find out where do these guns and ammunition come from. The most used gun in this conflict is the AK-47 or its derivatives. And about 95% of these rifles in Africa come from outside the African continent. And the largest supplier of ammunition to Sub-Saharan Africa, believe it or not, it is Spain. It, it makes you wonder who is profiting from this continued armed conflict in Africa. Probably they are not Africans. Thanks for watching this video. Now the question goes to you. Who do you think is benefiting from this war? And what can we do to stop it?